everybody to another episode of ZB's Horse Power Talk. I am once again ZB Zach Brown. A lot has happened this weekend in racing. Got some dirt racing going on. Mother Nature has already bested us on a couple races and some of the fun with it. But without further ado, let's get into it. Everything kicked off on Tuesday with the All-Star Circuit of Champions down at Fallujah Speedway in Florida. Well, David Gravel started on the pole on Tuesday and uh, took about halfway through the race. Brad Sweet got going and mowed down David Gravel, took the lead, never looked back, takes night one in normal Brad Sweet fashion. He's just fast car that night. Um, once you get some heat in the tires, uh, the bottom was really working for him. Um, just was able to take that race. No issues there. No surprise either. I think a lot of people would pick Brad Sweet to win those races. Night two. Well, let's just say there's a lot of drama. You're going to have a lot of hard racing in dirt. And especially for those who don't necessarily belong in the series or at least by the all-stars and world of outlaws uh, standards, they don't belong. I'm talking about Anthony Macri uh, outlaws and all-stars already are uh, not big fans of PA posse because they end up taking their thunder a lot of times. Um, Macri does what he does and he was racing hard um, I believe at the time it was for second or third place uh, racing uh, shots back and forth. Uh, shots was outside of him. Macri tried to slide up after the uh, after turn two, made contact, damaging the front wing on shots. Uh, clearly affected the speed. Macri was able to drive away. I don't know what was going uh, on in Shots' uh, car, but it started taking off a few laps later and freaking started mowing down people and actually ended up taking the lead with that broken wing. He was so fucking fast. He was clearly the fastest car. And after he took the lead, it ended up <laughs> the wing folded over. It, it completely broke, turned upside down. He had no speed left. Um, and he he fell back, unable to win that race. He ended up second to Carson Macedo. Macedo ended up taking that win. Uh, the uh, a lot of drama afterwards when they interviewed Shots, insinuating that if this was in the old days, um, Macri would be leaving out with some uh, marks and bruises on his face, to say the least. I don't know how much uh, shots would have fought him over just a simple all-star race like that, but it goes to show you they get frustrated with um, PA Posse coming in, and especially when they race aggressively like that, take the thunder. And um, it's it's going to be frustrating for them at any time, especially a racetrack where PA Posse doesn't usually come down. But it is the beginning of the year, and this is – kind of seen as a omen to come of what uh, for the rest of the year. But it's a long season shots. Just chill out. You'll get your damn wins. Your car was fast and all stars. Um, he'll, he'll be just fine this season. All right, moving on to the next thing on agenda with Volusia world of outlaws. Well, the first night, uh, it was Thursday night, and Mother Nature said, "Nah, I, I, I ain't happen it ain't happening today. We're moving to Friday." Um, so that sucked, especially for people that were there. But um, Outlaws made a good call and uh, pretty much started off the night uh, with the Thursday night feature on Friday. It was right at like six o'clock, six thirty. 
On the front row, PA Posse again trying to steal the thunder of the Outlaws and trying to take a win down there from them. Uh, Dietrich Macri on the uh, on the front row, um, definitely representing there. Uh, clearly shows their talent and shows that they can, if they wanted to, they could probably race full time in the um, in that series. Honestly, compared to some of the Outlaws that are in the series right now, they could definitely hold their own. But um, the real story with the Outlaws was uh, David Gravel just fucking smoked him that whole day. He just had the fastest car. Uh, took 10 to 15 laps for it to really get going in the first feature, and he just mowed him down. He was able to run the outside better than anybody, um, especially during, uh, turned one and two, just ran ran the shit out of that thing. Uh he could really run anywhere he wanted, top, bottom. It didn't matter. He was fast. And it it the same held true. Um, um in the second race, it was about six hours later, didn't matter. Took about the same amount of time, mowed him down, didn't look back, won both of them. And I mean, what a hell of a start for Gravel this year. So hats off to him. Saturday, fucking Mother Nature once again. Rained out, sucks. Everybody's like, well, well just make it up. It'll be fine. No, it just, it, you got 80 some races this year. It, you, it'll be all right. They, uh, they're not going to be able to make that up. They got two races in uh, one day. They're just not going to keep fighting Mother Nature. They got to move on to the next, to the next week and just, Sorry about it. Sucks, but it happens. That's what dirt racing, um, sometimes the fall of dirt racing, that just can't really control the weather. I mean, you race in Florida too, you're going to get a uh, rained out event. And just, yeah, that's just the nature of it. And with the Outlaws, they will be staying down there in Volusia. It's a two week event. It's six races. Well, it's supposed to be six races. Obviously, one rained out at uh Volusia. Um we'll see uh how everything unfolds down there again. See if uh Mother Nature will hold off and see if we get some good racing again. You know, definitely some good racing already. The track uh was very good, had a bunch of different lines you could run, uh, especially if you were David Gravel. And um we'll uh we'll see if the Florida weather can actually hold off for once. Um all stars they're heading down uh uh to east bay they're actually going to be racing um uh, monday tuesday night this week I'll have a reaction ne on next week's podcast about that they'll be uh racing as this is getting released i'll have the one already finished and um they'll race in valentine's day well valentine's night so we'll see if uh who takes own some money for their uh, their spouse and a little uh, Valentine's treat for them. That'll sum up the dirt racing portion of this. Let's uh, shift gears and get ready for the biggest race in motorsports. The Daytona 500. Let's go. It's finally here. Super Bowl's over. Football's over. It's into racing season. It is time for the fucking Daytona 500. 75th anniversary of NASCAR. Um, let, let's let's go. It's, um, traditionally, Daytona 500 can... It's hit or miss. And... Uh, Last year was a pretty good race. Uh, Cendric's defending winner as a rookie winning it um, uh, for Penske last year. Um, it, it's a crapshoot. Anybody can win it, um, especially in these cars. Um, luckily, it looks like Mother Nature is going to cooperate with us this year. Um, going to be a beautiful race, of course. Um, I mean, why wouldn't it be? It's just amazing um, how Daytona can just have greatest weather all the time. 
when I'm not there. Um, starting off with the duels of Daytona Thursday night, the well, after the uh, qualifying, of course, trying to get, uh, see if Alex Bowman can get the pole for, I believe this will be six years in a row if he get well, front row if he gets, it'll be six years in a row if he gets first or second in qualifying. The qualifying for the 500, it, it, it sucks since the clash moved because they would keep the cars down there after the clash, shootout, whatever. Next day, during the daytime, they would qualify. And then middle of the week, they'd run the duels. And then Daytona 500. Well, qualifying is going to be Wednesday night. So it, it's the... It'll be very interesting. They're obviously going to practice in the daytime and try to get the conditions for the racetrack for Sunday. But it it sucks in a way that when you qualify, it has nothing to do with how you're going to race. Um, the track's going to be immensely cooler on Wednesday and Thursday with those two events than it is on Sunday. It's going to be hot and slick. Florida heat beating on it. That's just how it's going to be. Um, but we got some racing finally, so hell yeah. Um, Daytona is such a historical racetrack. Um, it's the marquee event for all these drivers. Um, then you go to the Truck Series, the Xfinity Series, and then the Cup Series. The trucks are running Friday night, Xfinity Saturday during the day. And then the big one on Sunday. So Chase Elliott's racing in the truck series on Friday. So that'll sell some more tickets for him, probably. Um, that's uh, probably a big reason for him doing that. But um be uh definitely interesting. We'll see how how everything shakes up. Now it's time for my prediction. So I'm going to do a couple things. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll predict all three series um, for Daytona 500. I'll predict uh, who gets the front row because that's a significant thing for the Daytona 500. And then I'll predict the dual winners. And then I'll predict the truck series, Xfinity series. And of course the Daytona 500 cup race starting off. So Qualifying last half a decade has, well, even more than that, really. But for these particular drivers at Hendrick, it's been at least five years. It's they've had they've had the uh, the garage's number here in qualifying, but it's definitely different with a nighttime qualifying. Um, it's kind of hard to uh, see who might be the fastest who who will sacrifice race uh trim for qualifying trim it really doesn't matter a you really really that much um, of course you will start up front try to avoid early wrecks uh which will happen with the smackaronis um but really uh, the people you could start anywhere and end up winning the daytona 500 but it's hard to go against the Hendrick stable. I don't think they'll get both pole and outside pole. I actually think um I think on the front row you're going to see second starting outside front row. I'm gonna go with Austin Dillon. RCR is kind of revamping everything, and they've always been traditionally good on super uh super speedway races and Daytona, Talladega. So um, look for him to start front row and um, be quick at be quick down there. And on the pole again, like I was saying, it's hard to go against the Hendrick Stable. I'm gonna go with uh, William Byron. I think you'll see the you you can see the headline right now. Oh, the historic 24 and the three are on the front row of the Daytona 500. So that might be a little uh story for them to kick start the season the duels you'll you'll see the if those two are 
um, the actual winners, winners in qualifying uh, from duel one to two. They'll race a little bit till it gets a little bit too racy for them. They'll pull in just to avoid um, wrecks and everything. Um, sometimes um, they'll get caught up in something um, because they wanted to, I don't know, they wanted to just feel it out, but it's not really worth it. You just run a few green flag laps, pull it in, get ready for Sunday. Um, it's really hard to predict uh, the duels. Um, I think you'll see something out of the Roush stable or R RFK now, Roush Fenway, Kozlowski Racing. I think you'll see Kozlowski win a, one of the duels, definitely. I, I think his uh, – I think it's coming – it's close for him to pull one out of Daytona uh, for the 500. I'm not saying he's going to win it, but he's definitely got a shot. And I think uh, you'll see some momentum be carried in one of the duels with him. And um, another duel winner. It's really hard to predict. Let's look at Ross Chastain. Um, I'm sure he'll piss some people off and go with people and not go with people and get them loose and bump drafting and people are going to bitch and moan and all that stuff with him, but it's uh, racing and his style is his style and uh, he's not going to change how he races for anybody, especially for Denny Hamlin. So... Look for him to be aggressive in that if he does not win the front row um, to try to come to the front and get to win. It's a big deal to win down to Daytona. I mean, they'll make it a big deal to win um, when until we get to go in victory lane and get a little pre-party and a little uh, preview of what you, what could be if you win the 500. So um, there we go with those. Let's move on to Friday night um, with the truck series. Uh, I, I think this will be a... I think it's, it'll be a crash fest. Truck series. First race of the season. Everybody gets a little excited. A little too excited. Yeah, they'll uh, expect a bunch of uh, cautions in that one. And not because of stage breaks. It's going to be a media catch. It's going to be... Uh, I'm going to go with Chase Elliott winning that race. He's coming in and all the fans are going to go crazy and he may or may not have something a little extra under the, uh, the hood of that car, that truck. So look for Chase Elliott to win that one. Um, he'll definitely be one of the fastest trucks there. If he stays clean, he, uh, regardless whether it's illegal or not, he'll have a shot to win it. He, he's a smart race car driver and he'll, uh, He'll probably stay out front quite a lot and um, avoid a bunch of those um, really poor racers in the back. Going to Xfinity. Again, this is, it's such a crapshoot. Anybody can win it. Hard to go against uh, any junior motorsports car and um, super speedways. Um you know what? Just look for uh, Justin Allgaier to uh, pull that one out. He's a good race car driver. Um, it's a shame he can't just get that championship for Xfinity. He comes so close every year and just uh, comes up short. Um, he's a good guy. Um, he doesn't bitch and moan. He just he just goes out and races, and I think you'll uh, – you see a lot of people respect the way he races, and you'll I think you'll see um, a lot of people help him out and uh, go with him. And, yeah, I, I think he's got a good shot to win down at Daytona. Now for the Daytona 500. Again, it's a crapshoot. Nobody knows. Anybody can win it. It's who's there at the end, 
who doesn't make the mistakes on pit road, who is smart enough to go with the right people. It's so tough. But what a storyline NASCAR would have if this happened. And I'm going to predict it's going to happen. After two decades of trying, see where this is going? He switched teams. Going to get it done at the other stable. He's racing where Dale Earnhardt raced. Another two decades of trying for him as well. Kyle Busch is going to be the Daytona 500 champion this year. Calling that, not a Kyle Busch fan by any means. But what a headline that would be. Just watch for that. He stays clean, just like what I was saying about Chase Elliott in the truck series. Watch for that. RCR is very prepared for Daytona and Talladega all the time, and they had mediocre cars before. They had mediocre drivers. They didn't really have anybody to elevate it. Kyle Busch knows how to win at Daytona, just not the 500. Whether he's getting been caught up in wrecks, had some bad luck, whatever it may be, look for him to win it. He's aggressive enough to win it. He's smart enough to win it. Should be a very interesting race. I would, if I were betting, I would put money on that. I don't bet. I don't know. I don't gamble. Pretty uh, terrible and unlucky when it comes to that. But anybody listening that does gamble, Maybe sprinkle a little cheese on that. Just watch out. Um, But again, anything can happen. So if I'm wrong, um, I'm going to go back to saying it's Daytona. Sorry about it. Well, that pretty much does it. We'll kick off this racing season for NASCAR this Wednesday. Daytona 500 qualifying. Crack open a few cold ones on Sunday and um let's uh let her rip it's ready let's go it's uh it's exciting all racing's back you got all stars world of outlaws NASCAR fun time right now and around the corner drag racing's coming so it's a lot of stuff coming up and for those listening subscribe anywhere you get podcasts Spotify Apple Podcast, Amazon, YouTube, subscribe, follow, all that. Big bonus episode coming out this Friday. Get ready. It's going to be big. Still going to leave a surprise. You'll see it when it comes out. Keep refreshing that feed and get ready. It's going to be awesome. All right. I'm out of here. See you.